Welcome to StableSort. In this episode, we're going to discuss a data structure called Fenwick tree, also known as binary index tree. We'll develop simple visual explanations of how it works, and then dive into the details by walking over source code to learn how to implement it, and also efficiently populate it with data. Fenwick tree is very special. It allows to do range calculations, such as computing the total across a range of numbers, without having to examine every single number in the range. Hey, there's something you don't see in a toilet every day. So really quick, suppose we have an array of length n, and we want to find the total between the indices i to j. The simplest approach is of course to loop over the array from indices i to j, and sum it up. Easy as that! Hmm. Ha! If the array is length n, then this, of course, takes order n running time. Now, how can we do better? Suppose we pre-compute the running total in a separate array. So the value at index 0 would be the same value as the first item in the original array. The value at index 1 would be the sum of the first two items. The value at index 2 would be the sum of the first three items, and so on. Using this array, you'd be able to get the total in the range of i to j simply by taking the value at index j and subtracting the value at index i minus 1. This is a constant time operation. Life is good. Oh yeah! Except if a change is made to the data array, let's say someplace in the middle, you then have to propagate this change to the running sum array and affect every single element to the right of that index, which is again a linear time operation. Here's an idea. What if you were to split the running sum array into two halves? The first half would be exactly the same as before, while the second half would restart the summation. In this scenario, calculating the range that includes both halves would be a little more complicated. You'd have to add the total from the first half to the total from the second half. The benefit, however, would be that updates made to the first half would not need to be propagated up to the second half. Fenwick tree data structure takes this idea a step further, recursively splitting the array into smaller and smaller sections. While it is called a Fenwick tree, you don't actually need tree nodes with pointers. Instead, it's an additional array where half of the elements correspond to sections of length 1, a quarter of elements correspond to sections of length 2, and so on, which resembles a tree structure. Let's take a look at this more carefully. This is the same array as before, but is displayed going from top to bottom. This makes reading the binary encoding of index numbers a little more intuitive. Also, we're going to assume that the array index starts with 1. In most computer languages, the array index normally starts with 0, so just create an array of length n plus 1 and ignore the element at index 0. In 1993 paper, Peter Fenwick describes a very intuitive way of assigning each array index to a node on a tree using the index number itself. Start off by just looking at the rightmost bit of the index number, encoded in binary. If the bit is 1, then the Fenwick tree will simply store a copy of the value from the original array. Half of all index numbers, the add ones, have the rightmost bit set to 1. You could imagine this being the bottommost layer of a tree. For the remaining indices, if it's the second rightmost bit that's set to 1, then we sum up two values. Note that only half as many indices fit this criteria. Likewise, if it's the third rightmost bit that's set to 1, then we sum four values, again doubling the range of segment that the sum encompasses, and so on following an exponential progression. Let's try using this Finvic tree to get the total in the range from 1 to 7. The sum function is incredibly simple. Start at the given index i and add the value at that index to the running sum. Then flip the last set bit of i. We'll discuss this in detail shortly. And repeat until all bits of i are 0. For example, Suppose we want to get the sum from 1 to 7. We call this function with i equals 7, 
which in binary is 00111. So it has three bits that are set to 1. Thus, the loop will repeat three times, adding values at index 7, 6, and 4. Note how we didn't have to iterate over each item in the array from 1 to 7. We were able to skip some of the items. This is what makes the computation significantly faster when dealing with larger arrays. Here is another example. The running sum from 1 to 8 is simply the value at index 8. 8 in binary is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, so there is only a single 1 bit. Thus, the loop will execute only once. In other words, the value at index 8 encompasses the whole subrange of 1 to 8. The running time of this function is obviously log base 2 of n, since the while loop repeats however many 1 bits there are in the index number. Going back to the line of code that flips the last set bit of i, let's walk through an example. The number 7 in binary encoding is 00111. The number negative 7 is 11001. This is how most computers store negative numbers. This encoding scheme is called 2's complement, and it's calculated by flipping all of the bits and then adding 1. Finally, Subtracting from the original value flips the rightmost set bit from 1 to 0. Now, let's check what happens when an update is made to the data array. Hopefully, recomputing the Fenwick tree will not be too costly. Suppose we want to change the data array at index 4 from negative 3 to 7, effectively adding 10. This process is very similar, except after updating the value at a particular index, we need to propagate the change to the end of the array. We don't need to touch each and every item. Rather, only the items at exponentially increasing intervals. The algorithm for picking the index to propagate to is almost exactly the same, except we now add the least significant set bit instead of subtracting it. In this example, after updating the Fenwick tree at index 4, adding the least significant set bit results in 8. On the following iteration of the loop, adding the least significant set bit results in 16, which is longer than the length of our array, so the function halts. The last point to cover is how to populate the Fenwick tree. You could start with an array initialized to zeros and keep calling the add subroutine for every element in the data array. The subroutine runs in order of log n, so the total time would be order n log n. But if you want to be cool and do it in linear time, you could use the following very simple algorithm. Make a copy of the original array. Again, we're going to assume that data starts at index 1, not 0. Iterate from the beginning of the array, adding the value at index i to its parent range. Not all the parent ranges, just the immediate one. The index of the parent range is calculated by taking the number of the last set bit and adding it to the index itself. The examples here were using addition as the range operation, but multiplication as well as XOR operation work equally well. Perhaps the one major drawback is that if you need to do inserts or deletes, those are expensive to compute. But still, being able to do range operations as well as point updates in log n running time is pretty awesome. There is even a special scenario where a Fenwick tree could be used to facilitate updates done to a whole set of elements in log n running time. If you're curious about it, Please subscribe so as not to miss our next episode of Stable Sort, in which we'll discuss exactly this use case.